If you read the title of the video, which I assume you did since you're watching, you're probably thinking, that's got to be clickbait. There's no way that NIOSH is some sort of secret organization hiding things from the public. But in fact, it's true, and I have the Freedom of Information Act documents I requested through the CDC to prove it. So the story starts with me testing these different types of source control elastomeric respirators. Uh, the GVS, the Advantage 900 from MSA, uh, the Dentec, and this Elastomask Pro. Now, these two are notable because they're both easy to breathe, and they're both N95s. As far as NIOSH is concerned, they're identical, and that's all you need to know. But they're not, actually. This Dentec and this Elastomask Pro took very different approaches to how to make their masks more breathable. In the case of the Dentec, they made a filter that's, well, breathable, and still in NIOSH regulations for N95s. But they made it not such a great N95. Um, you can make the filters better than N95 and still get it N95 rated. And they chose to go kind of on the lower end to make it breathable with this simple filter pad. The Elastomask Pro used what's a smaller diameter filter uh, to make theirs, and they made theirs breathable, not by making the filter worse, but by making the filter much, much bigger. So they got a lot of surface area by using pleats, but pleats are expensive. So the Elastomask Pro Mask is expensive and very breathable and has very good filtration, vastly exceeding what's required for an N95. And the Dentec is inexpensive and simple, and it meets the N95 requirements as well. And you deserve to be able to make knowledgeable decisions about where you want to be on this spectrum of cost and effectiveness and breathability and filtration, but NIOSH does not want you to know. So when I requested the documents to find out, I knew that NIOSH knows exactly how breathable these masks are. They've done extensive tests, and you have to certify that your mask is going to keep getting the exact same results. And that's part of what makes uh, NIOSH testing so valuable, is that they do quality control requirements. So that mask manufacturers have to keep making their masks the same. Which means the test results that NIOSH have still apply to your mask today because it's supposed to meet those standards. And the test results are supposed to match. So here's what I got from them. I got dozens and dozens of pages of censored documents. Yeah, they actually censored them. They say the test data is secret and you're not allowed to know it. So here's what I got. And when we put the graphic up, you're gonna see the difference between these two documents. This one has little blank boxes where the data should be. And this one is the one that I got off of uh, the Soft Seal N95 website where they posted their acceptance letter from NIOSH and included the data. And you can see that they did multiple tests, 20 different samples, and it gives you a whole range of filter resistance, um, the uh, leakage percentage. Whereas this one that I got is um, missing all the numeric data that you need to be able to make informed decisions about where on the breathability scale you want to be or where on the filtration scale. Now this is data the public needs because, well, the NIOSH standards for breathability, they allow some pretty uh, masks that are not very breathable through, that they fit the requirements. And you know, you can see that variation if you go to the Acumed uh, mask database page and they've been doing private testing on masks and publishing it for the public but they do that for, well, marketing purposes. It's part of their social media campaign to advertise their own products. We shouldn't have to rely on the, um, well, the kindness of others to do NIOSH's work, which they've already done. And you need these numbers. And I plan to appeal this because, well, there's no justifiable reason for keeping them, even though they say that they are exempt from FOIA release. Uh, you know, as the member of the public, you might want these missing numbers so you could do statistical analysis to see if uh, maybe NIOSH needs new standards for N95s or to print these breathability numbers that they have or filtration numbers that they have on the mask itself so you can make your choice or maybe do a system of numbers of how breathable it is. I don't know and with these blank boxes, neither do you. So NIOSH needs to release this data and there's already a precedent for releasing that data because during earlier in the pandemic, NIOSH tested masks that were not for NIOSH approval and posted those results. So the idea that mask manufacturers deserve to have secrecy about their test results is nonsense. You're the public, you paid for those results, you deserve them, and it's necessary for the public good to release them. So 
I hope that we're going to get more information on that. In the meantime, um, we'll keep testing masks. We can do some basic comparisons. When I put a hole in the mask like this and like this, I can do a rough comparison of the mask breathability with a differential pressure meter, but I can't do it when I've got other masks that use different fittings for the test adapter because that introduces a variability because the constriction in the test adapter changes the breathability. So we're not just testing the filters anymore, we're testing the filters plus the adapter, and uh, that doesn't really give us solid numbers. Whereas NIOSH has really expensive machines and head forms to put these masks on to give them uh, really reliable, accurate tests that we have already paid for. So uh, if you're interested in these numbers, if you know something about uh, appealing for um, Freedom of Information Act requests that have been denied, uh, please go ahead and comment in the comments. And say if you've got any um, words or strategies that you think can help get this really important public data back out to the public.